world, don't you lose? I can't believe you're fools, but that's the way I like it, babe. I don't want to live for that. The ace of spades, the ace of spades, on it. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be speaking to you about the Family Inn at Rydalmere. So it was an old um, rock and roll venue in the 70s and 80s and just stay tuned if you want to find out what happened to it. It's a very old building. It was built in 1886 and it's located on the corner of Victoria and Park Road in Rydalmere. Now initially it was called the Rydalmere Family Hotel and the first licensee was a bloke called Henry Atkins. It kind of had changing licensees um, probably until 1929 when it was forced to close and then in 1949 Mellors applied to relicense the hotel. So it was actually uh, completely renovated and opened in 1949. Then during the 70s it kind of uh, changed its name to the Family Inn and they renovated it and um, yeah, just became one of Sydney's leading live music venues well until the early 90s. Rydalmere Park is right opposite the Family Inn and you can see it right here on the corner of Park and uh, Victoria Road, so very busy. Looks like there's an Audi across the road. This lovely park here with um, jacarandas that are in bloom at the moment. Looks wonderful. So it's on the corner of Park Road and Victoria Road, Rydalmere. And I'm just approaching the Family Inn, a long lost venue uh, for rock and roll bands in the 80s especially. I'm just going to go and have a look. This here is where the Family Inn is, was, and it's not here anymore. As you can see up these steps, dress rules apply, and if you look in there, well you probably can't see, it's just nothing. So it's kind of not, yeah, anything anymore. There is a family bistro, you know, bar. So the old family in Rydalmere location is here, but it's not, um, you know, the old club as we knew it. And what's happened is that the old bottle shop, which is just next door, is the one that's been transformed. So the, that's the, the newish one. But what I'm interested in is this one. Boarded up. So that's disappointing actually. I was kind of hoping it was the old family inn. Hopefully it might be open because it is Sunday morning, so fingers crossed. So I'm inside the family inn. The lady told me that the one next door was full of asbestos and that's why no one's been able to touch it. This part is a um, gambling area, I think. What's in here? Yeah, that's the gambling area. Um, there's a bar over here. You can see the big sign, Family Inn. Yeah, I kind of came here hoping to see the actual original Family Inn. So this looks like it's an eatery. There's a bistro over there. And outside there's What's out here? Just an eatery, I guess. Yeah, this is an outdoor area, which looks nice. So obviously it's uh, been transformed. There's lots of um, football memorabilia stuff up there. I thought I saw a post actually where the guy said that this was where the bands used to play. I don't know, I have to do some more research. I'm just going by what the lady told me. So she said next door was the old family inn and unfortunately it's asbestos ridden and I can't go in there. It's all boarded up and apparently they just had to shut it down. So here you go, the family inn at Rydalmere, a much loved rock and roll venue of the 70s and 80s. This is what it looks like now. People 
have a lot of memories of the family in at Rydalmere. Apparently across the road there was an SP bookie that was well frequented in the days before the TAB, so that might be a reason why the um, pub was so popular. Uh, there are people who recall um, people dancing on tables when you know various bands played, such as the Angels. There's a, a man who um, recalled two patrons apparently came in and uh, they were very drunk and they took on the whole bar. They had throw chairs thrown at them. A lot of people have told me that it was actually a disco first and especially in the 70s there were some crazy bands that played there like Mother Goose and they would have been quite entertaining with their fashion, you know, the colours and just the uh, high platform shoes, high waisted flares, things like that. Um, lots and lots of people um, talk about the quality of the bands that were there and uh, whether they were local or international it just sounded like it was a, a fantastic place to to see a band it was a great room good acoustics and just a, a a great place to yeah just enjoy a night out a guy called Shane Scully he was a crew member of the church and he recalls telling management that he always wanted some kind of security for the loadout as well as um, at the back of the sound and the lighting desk because there were always like either drunk people or jealous guys that just yeah wanted to create you know a bit of um, trouble. There was one punter who has memories of the band Motorhead who toured in Australia. He said it was so loud he was hiding behind the pillars on the dance floor. Apparently there were only about 40 people there that night and um, yeah, he went outside at one point and said that there was a, um, a guy from the council on the footpath with a decibel meter. And um, yeah, he said he was he And then he said that Lemmy jammed his bass into the air conditioning vent that was above the stage, walked off stage and let it feed back. So yeah, I don't know if the venue lasted long after that night. Um, a guy called Steve Bedwell, he recalls um, the Johnnies and the New Christs who supported Iggy Pop there one night. By all accounts, Iggy Pop was crap because all he did was um, play the Batman theme over and over again while smashing the air conditioning unit with the microphone stand. Very bizarre. One guy, Shane, recalls seeing Canned Heat in 1981, John Mile. Um, Deborah Callahan, she recalls sharing a table with Bon Scott, Jimmy Barnes and Swanee when Bon Scott got up on stage and played. Now according to Swanee that was um, the encore and it was something that kind of happened uh, quite often back in the day. So yeah that would have been a really memorable night with Bon Scott on stage. I've got some photos from Bob King, um, photographer extraordinaire, one of New Race who supported the church and they were actually a band led by Dennis Tech of Radio Birdman and they were kind of designed to introduce his American mates to Australia. They toured nationally in 1981. They were a hard and fast rock and roll band and their shows were always packed. From all accounts, the uh, beauty of the Family Inn was probably the crowds were a mixed bunch. You had surfers, punks, metalheads, bikers, uh, and of course, you know, suburban yobbos. It was just a, a really great place to, to see a lot of really legendary Australian rock and roll bands. And we would play, on average, uh, four or five nights a week. Uh, Initially, downtown Sydney, at places like French's and Checkers, Stage Door Tavern, um, the Rex Hotel in King's Cross. But then after that, we would go to the Burbs and we'd end up at the Coman Cutter at Blacktown, at the Family Inn at Rydalmere and Castle Hill RSL. You know, we'd go out where the actual people were. This is from the Facebook group where a couple of people recall sharing kind of joints with various band members. One guy with Lemmy, another guy with Mark Hunter. Uh, one person recalled some bikey fights at a cold chisel gig where they used chains. That's a bit scary. Um, yeah, and another punter also recalled how there were some bikies that turned up at a Rose Tattoo gig and they just proceeded to turf out the people that were sitting comfortably in the front row. Um, yeah, again, scary. Um, one guy, David, recalls seeing Dr. Feelgood performing there. Uh, D Minor from D Minor and the Discord said that he lived not far from there and he recalls an air vent that was a, a really popular one for guitar hanging. 
Chris Wilmot was a publican there when Motorhead played and he talks really highly of Lemmy from Motorhead and yeah he's got memories of the licensing police who were kind of intent on just closing the place down. Uh, one guy Glenn has a great memory of meeting Steve uh, Marriott and in fact he bought him a beer in 1983. Craig, a guy Craig from the Facebook group remembers one night it was so hot that um, the Sunny Boys came out for an encore just with their Reggies on. Yeah, speaking of Sunny Boys, one guy remembers um, somebody seeing them when they um, were supported by In Excess. Tony Beaumont, his dad owned it, he claims, and I'm sure that's true. He said he recalls Harry, I'm sure that's Harry Della, and Frank from Premier Harbour, and he just called them the best crazy entrepreneurs. He described the back of the room uh, was where they hosted the live bands and he said that the walls just uh, had graffiti and they just told a great history of the venue. International acts that played at the Family Inn include 1980, The Cure, 84 was Motorhead and apparently it was so loud you could really only tell what the songs were by watching Lemmy's mouth. Eric Burden, he played there. Iggy Pop was there in 83. George Thorogood and the Destroyers was there in 83. Apparently that was a great gig. UB40, John Mile and the Blues Breakers. Ian Gillen of Deep Purple was there in 81. In fact, Bob Yates, uh, promoter extraordinaire, he actually recalls uh, putting this gig on. I've got a great picture of him in his office with a poster there. Um, and the UK band UK Sweet Squeeze played there. It was a fantastic venue from all accounts. I recall my first ever uh, Radiators gig there. I believe I was 15 or 16 and I went with my older brother and I specifically remember it was the family inn. I was very excited at the time. So yeah, it's just a, one of the old rock and roll venues. Whatever happened to it, well, it is still there. However, it's not the same. It's basically just a, a bistro pub um, just for, you know, the locals who live around there. There's no real live music there anymore. Um, or if there is, there's, there's nothing like the good old, you know, days. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit like and subscribe and uh, check out my other upcoming videos in the not too distant future. Cheers.